What are cryptocurrencies? Hey, hey, hey. What are NFTs? A non-fungible token. Time to buy Bitcoin. Bitcoin just seems like a scam. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, Bitcoin? Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Ledger. As usual, this is your host Moel Said, and I'm back once again on your weekly rendezvous from Paris. It's always been part of Ledger's DNA to encourage internal and external developers to enrich our ecosystem. We made our code open source and available to any external developer, which resulted in third-party developers submitting most of the coin applications that you currently use on your Ledger device today. And last year, we extended the Ledger Nano applications model to include the blockchain integration feature to Ledger Live. This means that developers can now integrate their own blockchains to the Ledger ecosystem. During that time, we engaged with the team behind one of the biggest blockchains out there. One that took 2021 by storm thanks to its transaction speed, low fees, energy efficiency, and of course, developer activity. I'm obviously talking about Solana. After a few weeks, and with a single developer working on the integration, Solana is now available in Ledger Live. But how? This is exactly what we'll be talking about today. To discuss this, I'm pleased to welcome Dan Albert, Executive Director at the Solana Foundation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the decentralization, growth, and security of the Solana network. We'll be joined by the man behind their integrations, the one and only Fabrice Dautria, head of Ledger's developer ecosystem. Dan, Fabrice, welcome to Under Ledger. How's it going? Hey, thanks for having me. It's going great. Thanks for inviting me again, Mo. Always a pleasure to have you, man. <laughs> great. I'm excited to be kicking this one off. Um, so let's get to it. On the Ledger, Season 2, Solana on Ledger Live. Here we go. So first of all, congratulations to both of you on that integration. Um, I think it's great. And I think that, you know, the Ledger community will surely be appreciating all the services that will emanate from such an integration and the possibilities. Um, but if we can start by setting the table here, Dan, could you explain to us what the Solana Foundation is and what your role is within it? Absolutely. Um, so the Solana Foundation exists to really foster the growth of the Solana network and the Solana ecosystem, um, really kind of at the broadest levels. Um, so in order to achieve our long-term goal, which is to have 1 billion people onboarded um, into crypto, holding their private keys with the ability to, to sign transactions, just like we have so many people today who can understand what a username and password is and why you, you know, why this can unlock certain valuable services in, in uh, kind of the centralized world of Web2. Um, we want to be able to unlock 1 billion people to be able to understand um, and access you know, public key, private key, key pair signing to access the world that is Web3 that we're currently building. In order to really get there, uh, what has to underlie this entire ecosystem is the fastest, most secure, most high performance blockchain network. And so the Solana Foundation exists to uh, promote and foster the growth of the Solana network uh, from an infrastructure level, um, from a decentralization um, economically, as well as from an infrastructure standpoint, getting more validator operators, more humans running nodes, understanding what's, what goes on in the Solana protocol itself. Um, and a lot of these things often happen kind of, I'll say, under the radar. Um, it's not always the most uh, talked about or the most uh, you know, exciting um, talking points in, in crypto when a lot of people are excited about, you know, the new NFT drops and DeFi. And oftentimes the the network um, that underlies a lot of these things just sort of gets taken for granted. Um, and so the Solana Foundation has a lot of programs. We do a lot of grant giving. We have a lot of initiatives for validator growth, RPC operator growth, um, to really help expand the network footprint itself to make it the most secure um, crypto platform out there. Interesting. So you guys are the heroes behind the scenes that no one talks about, but that are quite essential to how any blockchain, especially Solana blockchain, actually operates. Um, And Fabrice, you know, as Ledger's head of developer ecosystem, your job is basically to be, you know, connected to all of these developer communities out there. Um, What I'm curious about is how did that, you know, connection first happen uh, and what, you know, is the usual process for having such an integration in, in Ledger Live? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. I need to go back in time a bit. Uh, I think I met 
Uh, some people from from your team, uh, Dan, probably Dominic. Uh, I, I I probably met him in Berlin at least two years ago, maybe a, a bit more than that. Uh, with COVID, we we all forgot uh, how time uh, fly. Uh, but at that time, I think you were maybe you soon or you were just releasing the main net uh, or, or it was the latest stage of the testnet uh, of the Solana testnet. And at the time we were in discussion for the nano application side of things. Uh, so to, to remind everyone that that means we were basically discussing hardware wallet support. Uh, how can you manage your keys securely uh, on Solana? And so that was my first interaction with the, with the Solana team at the time. And uh, I can't recall exactly which uh, which date we released the application, but we're still in touch with Trent, who built the initial application of Solana uh, for the Ledger device, uh, and we are still improving it uh, today. So even though we met at least two years ago, uh, it's it's still a work in progress. And as you know, as the Solana network evolves, uh, Ledger has to keep evolving as well uh, to support new transaction types and new features. Um, so the first layer was hardware wallet support. And very recently, uh, we we were pushed, I think, uh, greatly uh, by our top management, by the CEO, and by the market and users uh, to basically support Solana uh, natively in Ledger Live. Uh, our users, they, they don't only want to to use a hardware wallet with many different wallets, they also want to have their own crypto bank and be able to see all their assets in a single place. And obviously, uh, Solana was missing. It was a huge miss. And so we had to, to have it uh, integrated. But as you said, Mo, we, we, we changed our mindset. So now we, we don't do it ourselves, first of all, because we, we are not the, the most expert on the Solana ecosystem. A lot of people are building on Solana. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we got in touch with the, with the team uh, uh, in the Solana Foundation, and we got in touch with people that actually made the development on the Ledger Live code base. And so right now, we can uh, definitely say that this development has been done in part, at least for the send and receive part, but uh, much more will come in the, in the near future. Yeah, I think, you know, it's quite exciting uh, when you see that evolution before your eyes and you see, you know, this whole ecosystem being built collaboratively with the different communities out there. Um, and then, you know, there's a question I'm curious about is, you know, the Solana Foundation is a nonprofit, but what are the incentives that you have to, you know, work on such collaborations um, um, with regards, you know, to, to the broader community, but to the foundation itself? Um, so the one of the biggest kind of incentive tracks that we have is um, we have a, a, a large and expanding uh, grant giving pipeline for a lot of ecosystem integrations um, for a lot of projects, particularly around um, additional support that help encourage, you know, like I said, growth and decentralization of the network, which might not necessarily be um, uh, immediately profitable or tied to, you know, some hot token launch or anything like that. Um, but these are still, um, things that are really in the best interest of the network and the community. Um, so we do have, um, a grants program, as I said, um, for, uh, getting new support for, for wallets and for other staking solutions. Um, we also have, uh, infrastructure growth incentives, um, for new validators. We have a delegation program. The Solana foundation delegates the vast majority of its treasury to delegators in the ecosystem that meet certain performance requirements as well as certain decentralization requirements. Um, so in that way, the foundation really uh, can help encourage more humans to run more validator nodes, um, help get them bootstrapped, we provide some uh, educational resources um, as in addition to the stake delegation for those validators that um, qualify to receive stake from, from the foundation. Um, we've also partnered with a lot of data centers and um, ISPs around the world to help them understand the unique needs of the Solana network and the Solana infrastructure. Um, a high performance blockchain does require higher performance um, hardware and, and, and infrastructure than um, some older blockchains. Um, and as a result, the kind of infrastructure requirements for connectivity and how to run a validator and do so successfully um, are very unique. And so we've engaged with a lot of these sort of larger enterprise um, hosting providers and bare metal server providers to really advocate on behalf of our community to get them to um, start thinking about offering Solana specific um, servers or Solana specific uh, configurations or um, or networking packages, right? There's a lot of people that run 
you know, you can run a validator on various blockchains on AWS or on a large hosting provider. Um, and a lot of these, uh, a lot of these providers actually have clauses in their terms of service that actually bans um, uh, use for certain crypto projects. Um, and we've gotten um, alignment from a lot of these, uh, a lot of these providers to help them understand what it is that we're doing, what is the value in enabling the Solana community of both the uh, network operators, the validators, and the RPC nodes, but also the um, the DApps and all of the third-party services that connect, you know, the on-chain world to the off-chain world. Um, we've really been advocating for our community and seeing um, great success. So we have kicked off what we call the Solana Foundation um, server program, where we can uh, help connect anyone in our ecosystem who wants to um, engage with the Solana network from an infrastructure standpoint, um, connect with um, any of these, these hosting providers that, that have sort of bought in or are interested in buying in to help get really um, uh, quality hardware that is sort of approved to run on the, on the Solana network um, by, by SPAC. That's fascinating. So you're basically building all the bridges and the infrastructure that the Solana blockchain needs in order to thrive and to have more adoption and more, you know, developer activity and more people, you know, either using it or building on it. Um, and that's kind of what Fabrice is doing, but on the larger side, uh, in one way or another. And maybe you touched on the different levels of integrations, Fabrice, at the beginning of the conversation, but to the people who might not know what they actually are all about, maybe you can give us a quick rundown of, you know, what are the different levels of integrations and where do we actually start when we're working with a partner? Well, the, the first part is securing your keys, um, securing your 24 words. Uh, and, and this is the Hubble wallet uh, layer. So the first level would be to have Hubble wallet support for any given blockchain. So for Solana, for instance, we had to, to work on a Solana dedicated application that runs on the Nano S or Nano X or soon to come Nano S Plus. Um, this is the first level, but of course the Hubble wallet alone, that's cool. You will store your keys, but you will not be able to use it. Uh, so you need additional services that will connect an interface with the Hubble wallet uh, to allow you to make a transaction, uh, send it to a node, uh, see your balance, and do all the basic operations that you may want to do. So if I recall correctly, the first wallet that was um, compatible with Ledger was Soulflare at the time. Uh, and now the Solana ecosystem is so big, you have a bunch of other actors out, out there. Uh, one of, of the most famous one, I think, uh, would be Phantom, uh, which is also compatible with Ledger. So for us, Ledger, the second level, would be to ensure that the Hubble wallet is as easy to connect as possible to all these services. And we, we don't judge. I, I mean, users will judge which of these services are best. And one of these services is Ledger Live. Uh, of course, we love our own product, uh, and we hope our users uh, love it as well. But the value proposition from Ledger Live is, is different from the other wallets, because we, we support many different blockchain with within the same place, basically, so within a single software. So that's where uh, Ledger Live uh, added value can come in. Um, and so the first level of integration in Ledger Live is just to be able to see your balance, perform basic operation, as you would do with any other wallet. And then on top of that, you can add specific features. So you can add staking or delegation. Um, you can add tokens. Uh, you can add what we called live apps, so services directly embedded within Ledger Live. Um, but on which you wouldn't be you know, approving blindly any type of operation. You would receive all the necessary information to, to be sure that what you're actually signing is safe. So this would be really the, 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 the upper level uh, of the integration. But to reach that stage where we can basically, in, in the example of Solana, when we can, for instance, uh, list uh, the, the Serum DEX in Solana, that would require us to support all the basic feature from Solana, the tokens, and then be able to be completely, um, you know, connected to this uh, ecosystem and to these these standards that uh, that are at the foundation of the Solana ecosystem at the moment. Um, so we are not quite there yet, uh, but definitely looking forward to it. Um, and so the next step for us will be definitely staking. Um, but after that, I suppose tokens will be uh, will be something that we'll look into, NFTs as well, and hopefully by then we'll be able to to leverage and capitalize on all these other services that are, I would say, um, developed externally. Ledger will not build anything; we will just be 
aggregating all of these services and providing them with visibility and security. That's very interesting. So it all starts with the keys, actually. So being able to actually secure private keys and then, you know, basically interacting with the Solana blockchain using a Ledger hardware wallet. And then once you've done that, you actually start building on top of it all of these different layers that enable you to manage and grow your crypto in a secure ecosystem that enables you to like to clear sign and you know basically access all of these services. If you if you remember or if you look in the past, okay, with what what you know people were doing with Bitcoin, you you huddle uh, and you make transaction. With Solana, you do much more things. Uh, so with the new blockchains, uh, you have many different use cases. Um, and if these are the new, you know, it's the new trend. Uh, everyone is talking about this. That was not the case on Bitcoin. The hardware wallet has to adapt, but the software uh, with which you interact and on which you plug your hardware wallet has to has to evolve as well. Uh, maybe just to show your NFTs, but to be able to send them securely is another matter. So Ledger is still a security company. So at the core, what we do is we secure your keys and we secure your transactions by making sure that you can actually review the transaction details before applying your digital signature. Uh, but yes, uh, we need to evolve. Uh, the, this technology is moving so fast that we, we cannot stay behind. Uh, and so very, very pleased to have uh, the, the Solana network uh, integrated, at least the, the first part. And, uh, and I hope in the, in the next few weeks or month, uh, we'll, do, we'll do better. This is great. I uh, yeah, it's it's been really exciting to see this uh, support come from Ledger Live. Um, I remember Fabrice when you were first saying the um, when we first added the Ledger app support. Um, one of the Solana Labs engineers, Trent, uh, put the original app together in 2019 before we ever launched Mainnet. Um, and uh, back then, for a while, it was just command line interface. Um, and uh, maybe maybe I'm old school, but that's still sort of my my preferred primary way of interacting with my Ledger. Um, could you could you explain what that is to the to the listeners who might not understand what command line interface is? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, so I'm basically using um, a text terminal, um, a command prompt, uh, directly on my laptop to, uh, you know, type in the commands of exactly what I want to do um, and provide the path uh, in text form to my ledger that's that's plugged into my computer. Um, to say, you know, okay, I want to transfer this many soul from address A to address B or delegate my stake from here to here um, without really any, you know, there's no web browser interface. There's no graphical interface. Um, so it's much more sort of developer oriented um, interface. And that's really, that's all we had for, for a long time um, when we first got the Ledger app uh, rolled out. And then, yeah, as you said, um, Soulflare was the first um, uh, software wallet or kind of UI friendly wallet to, to provide uh, support for the Ledger hardware wallet and then Phantom came around and now uh, everybody's supporting it. So it's really great to see this kind of coming full circle um, all the way back to Ledger Live. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's interesting. That, oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 please go. I, I, I think what Dan is saying is fairly interesting because you're right. We, we probably released the application way before, but you knew about this, but it was still an, an application that was in very advanced mode because as you said, Mo, Many users, they are not familiar with command line interface. They, they don't know how to deal with this. Uh, and they wait to have a proper graphical user interface, a web app, or something that they can basically look at and click on buttons uh, to be able to, to uh, actually use uh, the, the network. Uh, so I would say that Dan is an expert. And uh, that's why he's still uh, relying on that. But you can see that the ecosystem grew tremendously because now, I don't think a lot of people are actually using the command line interface anymore. A lot of people are relying on very nice and easy to use uh, interfaces. Uh, and so, yeah, that, that can show you the evolution, but it also shows you that my role at Ledger is to try to onboard the teams and the different networks as early as possible. Because when they want to launch, and when they want to launch with a graphical user interface, they will onboard many users. Uh, and by the time they're in, it's important that they have a proper security solution to store their keys. We don't want them to start and, you know, just entering their keys uh, in a software application. That's that's fairly dangerous. So it's really important for us to be at the very early stage and to be able to help the, the teams with their security even before they launch their mainnet. That would be the ideal scenario. So I'm happy because it was kind of an ideal scenario, but uh, it's it's exclusively because the guys from Solana worked on that. Um, it's It's... 
on them and not on Ledger. Ledger was barely reviewing the code and making a security audit, but the actual implementation was made by the Solana team. So that was uh, fairly impressive. Yeah, and that's a very interesting point, actually. I'm curious, how did that, act, you know, what what would that experience like because from what i hear it took you like a couple of weeks in order to basically develop that um could you maybe speak more to the experience itself yeah it was the the engineers at solana labs um the, yeah they originally they wrote the original ledger app um or the nano app rather um but at the time as, as fabri said this was before we launched mainnet so there was no solana mainnet there was no staking rewards there was no serum there was no soul flare there was no phantom um you know, there was just this uh, this protocol and a, and a glimmer in our eye. Uh, you know, trying trying to launch this thing into the world. Um, but before we would, you know, launch mainnet um, and 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 mint all these tokens at at the genesis block, we need some way to make sure that from the very beginning of the network that all the private keys are um, held securely. And so, for the vast majority of of the accounts that we launched, that we actually launched the Solana mainnet with. Um, they were secured by keys held on a Ledger Nano uh, or multiple Ledger Nanos uh, from the very first Genesis block. That, that's interesting. So that, that was for the first kind of firmware application. And then for mm -hmm. the Ledger Live part, was that the same team working on the, you know, kind of using the same process or did anything differ there? And if, and if anything, you know, if you could tell us a little bit more about the, the approach itself. Um, so uh, the, the, the Ledger Live part, um, I would say it's it's... It's probably, from a developer perspective, easier than the Nano application. Nano application is really, um, you know, it's embedded C. It's uh, difficult because you have to deal with the memory constraint and a bunch of, you know, technical details. Um, you have to understand the protocol at a very low level to understand how you sign transactions, etc. So this was the the tricky part. But for Ledger Live, it's uh, it's actually an open source product. Uh, it's using standard languages that people actually use and so yeah someone uh, will remain private uh, but you can see everything on github um, actually designed the implementation for solana on the ledger live code base and he, it, it took him uh, i would say yeah a, a couple of weeks uh, maybe three to four weeks uh, but with an excellent quality of work uh, and us at ledger we were I would say not very knowledgeable about how the Solana uh, protocol worked. Uh, the 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 things I remembered was from you know pre mainnet, so it was not as as uh, as full of features as it is today. So this person who actually built the code uh, on Ledger Live was also teaching us at Ledger how the Solana protocol worked and what are the you know the the specificities how you you deal with staking how you deal with the minimum balance and 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 so on and fees etc so we learned a lot uh, but it was actually a very impressive uh, impressive work because in in 3 to 4 weeks we have a very valid implementation and then it was purely you know QA uh, integration work and verification at ledger but uh, most of the work was done already and as a matter of fact I can already tell you Mo the, the, the staking part is kind of done already we're just you know fine-tuning the design and the UI and things like that but most of it is already done so the the, the longest part will be our final QA and, uh, and our push to production but uh, and it's the same person who did everything, and so I don't know if it will be the same person who continue with tokens and and so on. But uh, so far, the, the the interaction with the was great. I think the Solana community is very thankful to that person. <laughs> uh, they, can, they can be. So maybe you know, if you're a developer and and you're listening to this, um, what would you actually want to know in terms of the next steps that you'd have to take if you want to build on top of Ledger? So the, the the first thing is to is to get in touch with us. Uh, so we have uh, this uh, this portal that uh, that is really targeting uh, developers, uh, developer.ledger.com, um, and you will find all the different information you need um, from Nano application to Ledger Live to Dapp Browser to Live Apps. You can find everything you need there. Uh, but the first step is really get in touch uh, because. You know, there are many, many crypto projects out there, uh, and we still have to somehow manage these integrations. Uh, it's not because it's uh, it's open source that it's uh, that it's free for all. It's really we need to be able to 
to assist mm -hmm. the external developer, to uh, explain the process, to merge the code, to have some developers uh, inside Ledger that will actually review it, uh, some QA guys that will actually test it. Uh, so it's uh, it's still a lot of work on our side, but I would say the the heavy uh, the heavy lifting work of, of actually coding it uh, can be done externally. Uh, so probably you could say 95% of the work can be done by uh, by anyone outside Ledger. You also got to make sure that it's all secure and that, you know, the code is actually doesn't have any exploits. So it's it's important to remember and to remind everyone that the security is coming from the Ledger device itself, so from the Ledger hardware wallet. So this part, uh, and this is here again something entirely open. Uh, you can check the code on GitHub, but uh, more importantly, in the example of Solana, for instance, uh, Trent from Solana Labs did the original applications. Uh, our team made the security audit. Uh, so th this is where the security part is really so critical. Uh, this is where Ledger is bringing, uh, I, I think, uh, added value. Uh, but for all the features developed in the app uh, itself, uh, you can thank the, uh, Trent and, and his team because uh, they were the one really making all the design choices. Uh, and so if right now this app is, is working so well, it's uh, thanks to them. Awesome. And then what if a developer wants to build on top of Solana? Where do they need to start? Yeah, um, for developers, the best place to start is um, our developers portal, which is solana.com slash developers, um, or reach out to any of us um, on Twitter, on Discord. Um, we've really been, um, we've got building out a, a really great kind of developer relations and developer advocacy team. Um, that have been creating um, an incredible amount of content for for all sorts of developers to to get started. Whether you're um, an existing Solidity developer, or if you're a, uh, I'll say a more traditional web developer um, or systems engineer, um, we've got resources for you. Um, we also, um, we're also doing um, these these in-person developer events. We're on a bit of a world tour right now that we're calling the Hacker Houses. Um, we've done about seven or eight so far this year um, in cities all around the world. Um, there's one going on right now in New York City, um, and we've got a couple more announced. Um, we'll be in Miami next month, um, and then stay tuned for a whole bunch more announcements um, of, of dates and locations. But basically what these are are um, five-day offline events in person. Um, we're getting um venues we're going to throw a ton of monitors all the free coffee and, and high-speed wi-fi you can imagine um send in some of the best um engineers from solana labs and other ecosystem projects and get new and experienced developers who are, are curious to build on solana in the same place um hacking together for the better part of a week um we do some technical workshops we do um office hours if you have questions you can come and ask um kick ideas around in person um, and it's a really, it's a really exciting event. It's just great to see so much um, enthusiasm and people really getting together and and, and pumping out some code. Um, and we do demo days at the end of the week where people can just get together, show off what they've built, show off what they're struggling with. Maybe they're launching a project. Um, and so these have been super, super exciting. Um, and just, yeah, so the uh, information there is on solana.com slash events. Um, or at Hacker Houses on Twitter. It sounds awesome. And we'll include those links in the description of the podcast so you awesome. know, people can, Thank you. can click on them. So before we move on to our last segment of the show, um, I wanted to ask you what you think are the main, um, you know, uh, your project's main milestones that you're most excited about um, in 2022, whether it be for Solana or for Ledger. Uh, Dan, you can go first. The thing that I'm most excited about um, right now is Solana Pay. Um, this was announced and rolled out um, just a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago. Um, it's a simple protocol built on top of Solana that allows any merchant or any point of sale um, to uh, accept uh, payment using the Solana network. And that can be in, in USDC or stable coins or any other token. Um, so you can you know, if your merchant accepts, you can go to your coffee shop and, and buy a coffee and, you know, tap to pay with your phantom wallet. Um, there's also um, SDKs for online merchants to accept um, payment through a phantom wallet. And I believe some other wallets adding support as well through the web browser. So you can check out from an online merchant as well. Um, and so we've been seeing like a tremendous amount of interest in, and, and growth um, really in the, in the payment space. Um, and I think that's that's been really exciting to see because that's a use case that 
I think has eluded a lot of blockchains to date um, for a variety of reasons, either for the user experience or the fees or the, or the latency, you know, compared to a traditional uh, credit card style checkout. Um, and so it's been really exciting to see the, uh, the kind of rapid interest um, in, in this user um, experience on Solana. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting. I think the whole aspect of, you know, on and off ramps is, you know, a key point to the development of most uh, of the blockchains out there and, you know, to the whole ecosystem. Um, and with Solana having, you know, very high transaction speeds, it's, lit, you know, very well positioned to become, you know, one of the blockchains that are, um, you know, able to attract a lot of these different uh, businesses uh, that, that would actually use them to as payment, you know, get gateways to their customers. Um, what about you, Fabrice? What are you most excited about? So, very short-term vision. Sorry for that, Mo, but uh, Nano S Plus. Uh, I want to see it, you know, live with people using it, with the application running on it. Uh, that's uh, that's the next next big thing uh, for me on the Nano application side. Um, on Solana side, really um, staking is the is the big focus. Uh, I think we we said it before the interview ac actually started, but I told Dan it's the priority number one at the moment. So it's really what we're working on. Um, then I think NFTs uh, that will be. Uh, I know for a fact as soon as we as we as we're done with staking, uh, I know that the next request will be for NFTs. So we we have to work on that uh, specifically for Solana, uh, and uh, I don't know how long it will take, but. Uh, one, one step at a time, though. It's, uh, it's, it's already a lot of work. I can imagine. I mean, we're all kind of excited about everything, you know, and the NFT kind of ecosystem is bringing because it's basically, you know, enabling us to onboard, you know, millions of people, uh, I feel, or will enable us to onboard millions of people if we've not reached the million mark yet. Anyway, it's time to move on to our last segment of the show. This is free for all. So for this last segment of the show, I've decided to share my role with you and have you ask each other one question each. This is kind of our own way of usually participating in decentralization. Uh, so feel free to go first. Okay, I'll start. Um, so uh, my question for Dan would be, if I'm, let's say I'm interested in Solana, um, I want to invest a few bucks and try something. What would you advise me to try first? It's not really not a tricky question. Eh? It's uh, yeah, any no, answer I, will will work. It's like sure. what would be your I, personal preferred, you know, service uh, relying on the on the Solana right. network? Right. It's it's which answer can I give that won't get me in trouble with my lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not necessarily what you're going to buy first. What I usually tell people, you know, for instance, um, uh, on, on different blockchains is uh, if you want to start, you know, in, uh, you know, doing something, investing, but not necessarily in, in, in something that's super risky, there are services like, I don't know, th something like Pool Together, where you, you invest with a lot of people and then at the end of the day, you, you basically don't you lose your stake. So it's not necessarily chilling a project, but something that's, you know, enabling you to have a, a, a good entry point, I think. Or, or, or even better, uh, let me phrase it differently. Could you maybe suggest me one service uh, in all sense of the word that would allow me to understand and perceive the, you know, the main difference, the main differentiator uh, from Solana compared to other blockchain? How will I get this wow effect? Uh, and uh, which one would you recommend for, you know, a newbie like me? Sure. I think, um, I think the wow effect um, really comes from... Um, having an experience that feels like you're using a web two app, um, either on your phone or, or on the mobile app. Um, so phantom wallet, they recently released their, their, uh, their mobile wallet for iOS. Um, and you, like I said earlier, you can use this for, for Solana pay, um, and the tap to checkout, um, you get a little, you know, waiting circle for just a second. And then you're, you're clear just as fast as, you know, as if you were checking out with a credit card or, or, you know, or any other kind of tap to pay. Um, the similarly, like, you know, buying and swapping NFTs, um, on, on say magic Eden, for example, um, is, it's just a really slick and clean interface. Um, and the fact that whatever the, you know, whatever you may or may not be, um, using the, the actual cost to use the service, the underlying fee is, uh, is, is so low that, you know, people never really have to think about it. Um, you just say, oh, I'm going to, you know, check out or use this thing and just go for it. Awesome. That's very interesting. Your turn, Dan. You can ask for a question. Um, I guess my question would be when it comes to um, really which services do you think um, Ledger Live is going to kind of add the most unique 
user experience too when it comes to adding support for for all of the various Solana programs. Can you maybe clarify a bit what what sure. uh, if, if I understand correctly your question? What I think Ledger Live will bring um, security will be seamless. At least that's the goal. You you don't we don't want people to worry about security. It should be safe uh, by default. So that's the the. The promise, first of all, uh, within Ledger Live, it will be secure by default. Um, the the added value is clear signing, so you will see on your device what you're actually doing. Um, and the added value that goes along with it is making sure that whatever you do um, is done automatically. Let me give you an example, maybe to to explain that. Um, let's assume that you want to send an NFT on the Solana blockchain using Ledger Live, but you don't have the Solana application up to date on your device. And so if you were to try to do this transfer of NFT, uh, for whatever reason, you would not be able to see the details of the NFT you're, sign you're sending. That's actually the way it works today. It's not perfect. It's, it still could be improved. Well, in the future, what I hope we can, we can achieve is Ledger Live, and why not other wallets as well, would realize, oh, the application is not up to date. Let's update it automatically in the background so that the user always has the latest you know, version of the application and enjoy the latest security fixes or latest features. And then you would send your NFT without any problem, without any you know, complex and uh, not understandable error message. Um, but more importantly, you would be able to check on your device, OK, this is what I'm sending. This is the collection. This is the token ID. This is, this is what I'm actually transferring. So we, we've worked on that already uh, on Ethereum, but this concept of bringing clear signing and real security to all the networks is still a, a strong work in progress on our side. But we we believe that that's the real added value. When it, when you try to find the, the most common, the smallest common denominator, that's it. Saving your keys, securing your keys, that's the first part. Securing your interactions is the second part. And that's the part now that becomes the more relevant because people get hacked today not because they shared the 24 words. That's still the, the vast majority of hack is coming from this, so don't share them. But another way that is becoming more and more um, used today by, by hackers is to trick you in signing operations that you don't actually verify and you don't know what you're doing. And then, you know, it's blockchain. So when, once it's done, it's done. <laughs> and you cannot you cannot roll it back. Um, so I, I would say that's uh, that's probably the, the the biggest challenge and and at the same time the biggest added value that we that we aim to to bring to our users yeah i hope this answers your question then <laughs> yeah i think it definitely makes sense blind signing is a big attack vector um you know lots of people are actually losing assets because of it so aiming to you know solve that friction on solana and other blockchains is definitely something that you know we're all most looking forward to so, gentlemen, I mean, as usual, Fabrice, it was a pleasure to have you, Dan. Pleasure to have you on the podcast for the first time, and I hope it's not the last. Thanks a lot. Speak soon. Thank Thanks you both. so much, guys. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. That's it. What a conversation with Dan Albert and Fabrice Dautria. If this intrigued you and you're a developer who's interested in building on top of Ledger, don't hesitate to visit our developers portal at developers.ledger.com and build on. This was On The Ledger from Paris with your host, Mohd Said. Till next time, take care. Au revoir. This content is provided for informational purposes only and is the sole expression of our opinion and should not be relied upon as legal, business, investment, or tax advice. Do your own research. Any loss or profit is your sole responsibility. Stay safe.